Hello and welcome in. Mark here, aka the Markster. This is video number 53 in the FreeCAD series. Today I'm going to model this object here. This is an image that was uploaded to the FreeCAD forum in the help section. And I thought it would make an interesting video. The problem is, this thing has so many variables. So this video is probably going to run long. So I'm going to try to speed through this as quickly as possible. Perhaps if I get to a stopping point, I'll stop and and make it uh, multiple parts. We'll see how it goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you which version I'm using. 0 0.19 revision 2.0036 on Windows 10. We go to part design. Let's go to dynamic data, create a new object. I'm going to call this one base width, and that's 5.5. .5 inches there's already a base group uh, base dimensions so the base width is <coughs> five and a half inches I made it a formula so it'll show up here so I can read in inches. So that's the base width. That's this here. And then the base depth is going to be two and a half. And the base thickness will be three quarter. And base fillet radius will be one quarter. We've got three of them here. Save this document. <clears throat> I'm going to call this a slant. This distance will be three and a half. Slant length, three and a half inches. And this distance here, I'm going to call this top. This will be two inches to the center of this hole plus one and a quarter radius. So that's three and a quarter top length. 
for lack of an imagination. This is three and a half, this is three and a quarter. Yep. All right, now that should be enough to get that first sketch. I'm gonna sketch this face here, pad it, and then come back and cut away these other parts. <coughs> and we'll add properties as needed. First sketch will be on the XZ plane. And let's see, I'll take this multi multi line tool. I'm not going to do the fillets just yet. I'll do them in a moment in this sketch, though. Let's go ahead and set a few dimensions first. So this will be that five and a half dimension, which is base width. This will be the slant length. These will be parallel. These will be parallel. This will be perpendicular. And that eleven sixteenth is the top thickness. Let's make one for that. This will be top thickness. And let's do the slant length here. Slant length. All right. And the top length. Do I have a variable yet for that? Top length, yes. These two are perpendicular, and this angle here <coughs> is 60 degrees, so this is actually 120 here. most of our dimensions in place. I'm going to go ahead and start making these fillets. I'm going to use this tool here. Just click the vertex
each of these will be equal to each other and the radius is going to be, let's see, what do I call it? Base fillet radius. Two degrees of freedom and that's the thickness here, which is the base thickness. And here, which is the slant thickness. Let me see if I have a variable yet for slant thickness. It's the same as base thickness, but I want to have that option of changing it later. Uh, let's see, three quarter inch. So we don't have a convenient edge. We can use we can use construction lines to do this. I just put one here and here. Make it perpendicular and set this length to Slant thickness. And all right, so that's that sketch. I'll go ahead and pad that. base depth I want it reversed save our work all right that looks really good now we need to work on this bit here We need a datum plane on this face, but I don't like mapping the faces. I could map to this edge, but that's going to leave us in danger of the topological naming issue. If we come back and make changes to this sketch that changes the number of edges, it could knock the mapping of that datum plane off. But I want to do that. If this was if not for this angle I would just move it map it to a plane and move it. So what I'm going to do is a little trick that uh, one of the guys on the board mentioned is you can map to the face map your datum plane to the face and then go back and unmap it and it'll stay where it's at deactivate it so now you're safe from topological naming issue but there is one down, downside to this. If we change this dimension here, the sketch is it's not going to follow it. So we're losing some of our uh, parametric ability. We just have to remember if things go crazy, 
which they won't it'll just be out of place but we just need to go back in and map this back to this face again and then go back and, de and deactivate it I have to hide it to map it to the face let's see try this again plain face now I'll go deactivate it's a hack we might could figure out what angle to rotate and how far to move it but I don't want to spend that time right now trying to figure that out so let's go ahead and add a sketch here all right now let's look at our picture so this is two inches from the center of the circle I want to cut away this bit and cut that cent central circle out and that's a 746 thousandth ream so what they do here is drill it to three quarter inch and then ream it to 746 thousandths which is four thousandths of an inch smaller the reason you would use a ream is it's much more accurate than a drill bit Drills do not drill super accurate holes, not when you're working to this precision. But a ream is kind of like a drill bit with some little blades on the outside, and it will give you a very precise hole. So my guess would be the plan here is ream it to 746 and then put a 750 rod pressed into here for a press fit you have to use a shop press to do that but once you do it's man it's there it's in there so that's probably the game plan for this part if it's a real part so let's put a circle on here go back to normal mode and this diameter is going to be that ream diameter which I need to set a uh, let's see I have to close the sketch temporarily and add a new variable and this will be ream diameter Let's call these slant dimensions. And I'll put the value here. That's going to hopefully organize this set of properties a little bit better all right let's set this to ream diameter now this was two and a half that was the base depth step divided by two hopefully puts us in the middle and that was two inches this way <clears throat> so we need another property this is going to take a long time adding all these properties there's so many of them call this one um, uh, 
That needs to be negative. Waiting on, let me change the negative in the properties. Okay, so that hole's ready. And now the outer part. This is one and a quarter radius. This time we'll need um, an arc instead. And this one will be on this edge and that'll set that radius. We'll set all these equal to the same verticality look how it's doing press M to get to the right mode that you want alright that's not going to work I need to make this around here to cut this off. Delete these. Uh, try again. They had me in the wrong mode. There we are. Nope. This can be bigger, it doesn't matter. It's not a critical dimension as long as it's, or it could be the same, but we might run into cold planar face issues if we make it just the same. Plus I don't like coming in too close right here. So, let's see, let's make these two the same. This doesn't matter at all. I'm not going to give it a property name. center height times 5 all right bigger doesn't matter let's go ahead and pocket this and we'll go Slant thickness. Top thickness. 
times two, just to make sure we go far enough. All right. Now let's look at our picture again. <clears throat> We've got a counter bore here, which is one and a quarter, and it goes in three eight inch deep. Should have called these top dimensions instead of slant. Right. And this one in the quarter. Top kind of bore depth. Select the datum plane, make another sketch. Could have made a link to external geometry to the other sketch or did a carbon copy. That would have been another option. But I don't like using a link to external geometry because of topological naming concerns. And, uh, The other one would have worked better though. But it still could be some issues. But I don't think, I think it's pretty robust. When you do the carbon copy, it brings in your constraints. And, and they're pretty robust for us to change this to that sketch. But this is the most robust of all, like this. There's a little more work involved. So now we'll pocket this one. And that'll be that kind of board depth. So the beauty of this, even though it's a lot more work, it's taking a lot more time, we can just come in and change these parameters. And this should, this thing should hopefully work whatever, whatever we make it.
was one that I didn't do right though, come to think of it. Let's go ahead and link that to something. Base depth. It'd be much bigger than needed, no matter what the base depth is. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> now we should be fully parametric. The next thing will be this uh, slot right here. Seven eight inch wide, one quarter inch deep. Select the datum plane. Make a sketch. Close the sketch. I'm going to go ahead and add these properties. Top slot width is 7 8 inches. Top slot depth. Top slot depth was a quarter inch. Oops. <clears throat> Wrong key. I'm going to have another free tag come up on me. All right. Um, so the reason I don't add the value in that uh, property creation dialog is I want these. If we were using millimeters, I would, but since I'm using inches, I want to be able to look here and see both the millimeter and inch dimension. All right. Now let's open this sketch back up and put the slot in. Call that one top slot something, top slot width. All right, and we need to center this. We had a point here. Step divided by two puts us in the middle, and then we'll use symmetry. We got one degree of freedom. Now I'm gonna let it extend on past. getting already making that a, a negative in the DD object. All right. <clears throat> so that should be plenty to cut this no matter what we set this parameter to hopefully. And we'll go ahead and pocket that now. And that'll be top slot depth all right we're coming right along 34 minutes in though all right we need to make this bottom little slot here 
That's a slant slot, I guess you can call that. Now this is 7 16 from the end. 30 degree from vertical angle. This is 1 and 5 eighths from here to here. Put that one in first, 1 and 5 eighths. Go ahead and make a sketch here. I need to name this dimension. be slant slot width. Measure width. Yeah, I named this top dimensions. I would name this next one slant dimensions. But I've goofed and I don't want to go back and change it. So this is one and one eighth, is it? One and five eighths. Alright. It'd be a lot quicker just to enter these as immediate values, but we wouldn't have parametricity. Wouldn't that be parametric? Or as parametric? It would still be parametric. You just have to go in and hunt and peck and try to find all your dimensions. So this will be base depth divided by 2. Then we'll center symmetrically. Look at our picture again. So we've got third degree angle. That's really all we need to worry about. Let's catch this one here. We also have to worry about that this height. Let's see what that is. That's a quarter inch. <clears throat> Let's add some properties for that. This is a slant slot depth. That's a quarter inch. And I'm going to put one for the angle also. Choose an angle type. Slot. Slant. Slot. Angle. That shall be 30 degrees. Back to the sketch. So this is 30 from vertical, which means it's 60 that way. Let's hit this angle.
we set this height, we should be able to constrain. Oops. Look at the picture. It looks about right. It should be 7 16th from here to here. Let's take a measurement. And see what, how much is 7 16th? 11.11 11. so that's good we're looking good and we can pocket through all on this one and we have these two holes these are one half inch holes from here which I guess is this face is one and one eighth and then one and one eighth to the next center and these are half inch holes so <clears throat> we'll call these slant holes Call it slant hole separation. This can be one and one eighth, one and one eighth. Freight train passing. I don't know if you can hear that. <coughs> this datum plane we gonna need one for this edge here I'm gonna show the origin and let's, let's attach this one to the XZ plane and that's gonna be rotated around the Y nope on the X and that'll be 30 degrees and hide that origin let's save where we're at save and save often with a free cat you never know when you're gonna crash two circles it's really not that bad at crashing but it does happen time to time <clears throat> in this diameter So from here, from here is where this depth is going to be set. And 
dead planes. So this slant left. Slant length minus one quarter minus one plus minus. Use our parameters. Um, slant slot depth. Top slot depth. Minus hole separation. Slant hole separation. separation this will be base depth over 2 That slant depth, slant thickness times two. Make sure we have enough. And that needs to be reversed, evidently. All right. So we've got the top and the slant done, and we're at 48 minutes. So I think what I'll do is put this it's in this video here and I'll start immediately recording the second part. So this will be a two-parter because it's going to go over an hour doing the rest of this. Alright, so thank you for watching and uh, I'll have the I'll have both of these put up simultaneously.